So maybe you wanna join the army, maybe you're already in the army and you're like, hey, what are some of the best MOSs to get into the army and do? What are the best jobs in the army? Well, these are five of the best jobs that there is in the United States Army. What's up my friends, US Army veteran Christopher Chaos and today we're talking about the five best jobs or the best MOSs that there is in the United States Army. For those of you that want to join the Army, maybe someone who's already in the Army, you're like, man, did I make a mistake? Did I pick the wrong MOS? Should I pick one of these? Well, that's what we're here to cover. And uh, it's not really specifically like this one's the best one. These are just five ones that the order may vary based on your interests and certain other people's interests, but five of the ones that I personally feel like are the best and you may disagree with these and you may have some different ones and that's fine. So maybe you can kind of compare what you think is the best MOSs in the army or the best jobs in the army compared to mine and give some feedback down in the comment section. Of course, if this is the type of content you're interested in, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Now we can learn more about the United States Army, be entertained about the United States Army from a US Army veteran like myself. Hit that bell to get alerts as soon as new videos go live to include live streams and become a part of that awesome notification platoon. So let's dive into this list. Like I said, no particular order, but the first one that I got on the list is a 17 Charlie, which is a cyber operations specialist. This is a really tough MOS to get into. I've heard of some people getting it. It is a bit of a challenge. The AIT, the training that goes involved with it is very difficult. It's very lengthy as well. It takes a long time. I think it's like about a year of training, but this MOS can be great, especially for someone who wants to take this knowledge and use it in the civilian world. That's how a lot of these MOSs on my list are, are like, but they also would be great just because of the value that you get from being able to get this education for free from the army. There are probably people that pay big money to get the education involved with being able to do this job because this job is very needed in today's society with the internet and companies that are very much worried about cyber attacks, people hacking into their, into their uh, servers, into their network to be able to get vital information and people need these individuals in the workforce. Companies are willing to pay pretty big money for people to be able to prevent against hackers from getting a hold of their database, to be able to leak customer information, confidential information, whatever the case is, and the military is no different. So this job in the army is for that reason, to be able to prevent any kind of enemy from being able to hack the servers or any kind of other information to keep away any kind of, you know, type of cyber attacks. So this could easily be an entertaining MOS, especially if you're a techie kind of person, to be able to do 20 plus years and probably have a great time in being in the army, to be able to get that experience, or even doing, let's say, I think it's a minimum of like six years possibly for this MOS anyways, but let's say doing six, 10, eight years, whatever, and take that and be able to get a great, probably civilian job with that experience that you got from the army. The second one on my list is a 91 Bravo, which is a wheeled vehicle mechanic. Now this MOS is very lengthy. This is actually the MOS I was originally gonna to try to join into the army with, but because I have a partial color blindness, I was disqualified from it, but it's a very tough job for individuals in the army. I knew a lot of people in this MOS and you have a lot of times late nights because you're doing services, doing maintenance on vehicles, especially when you're on a deployment because you have to make sure these vehicles are up and running for the next day's missions. Pretty much everybody has a vehicle for the most part in a lot of locations in the United States, right? You have a vehicle and at some point in time, it may break down, you may need maintenance on it. So this is a job that people need. People need people to be able to work on these cars, whether it's a gas car or an electric car, you could probably eventually you know, transition that wheeled vehicle mechanic stuff from the army into the electric world when they kind of start getting more and more popular throughout the years. But nonetheless, these mechanical skills that you're learning in the army can very much transfer over into the civilian world. Especially depending on how far into the army career you go with this MOS, you easily could end up, let's say you did, let's say 20 plus years, you probably have enough experience in this type of field to get out of the army, retire, and probably open up your own automotive shop. I think just about every single mechanic that I know has used those skills in the army to transition that into the civilian world and gotten some kind of great either automotive job working at a local automotive place. There's some people that I know that got like great government jobs working on vehicles for like the government. And it was pretty rewarding because they were able to directly transfer those skills from the army working on these, you know, you know, gasoline vehicles for, you know, the, you know, gas engines and all the other kind of components of a wheeled vehicle to just your simple like vehicles in the civilian world. Number three on my list is a 25 Bravo, which is an information technology specialist. This is an IT field in the army. These are individuals who work with servers, work with that type of higher level IT type of stuff. 
I know some people in the army that did this, they got out and did IT stuff in the civilian world and that can pay pretty darn good. There's some people that I worked with that went on to great, great jobs, you know, especially working with the military that pays like anywhere from like $100,000 or more. So if you are good at what you do and you know your stuff, you can probably land a pretty darn good job from the information or every, all the skills you learned in the army. Plus it also gives you a lot of like those certificates that they want. This job will get you like, like, uh, like security plus and you know, net plus and CC, whatever all the damn terms are for all these different IT type of certificates. You can get those while in the army and the army will pay for them. So you could build up, let's say whatever amount of years you did in the army, build up all these certificates and keep up to date with them, get out. And now you have all these IT certificates that a lot of employers really want for their IT staff and probably pay pretty well for that. Now I've got two more MOSs left on this list, but before we get into those, this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. If you're not familiar with the Ridge Wallet, well, it's possible that you have some old school foldable wallet and this guy is a lot easier to carry around than that foldable wallet is. This thing can hold up to 12 cards, but it also has room for cash on the back with either a money clip or a band. It can easily fit in the front pocket, back pocket, and even has RFID blocking technology inside the wallet. This wallet is very durable, but guess what? It also comes with a lifetime warranty. Now there are plenty of colors to choose from, different designs, carbon fiber, this cool topography type of one, all sorts of awesome designs. So there's a lot of different ones you can pick from. Now, best of all, because you're here on my channel, you can head on over to ridge.com slash chaos army and use the promo code chaos army at checkout to get 10% off of any wallet, backpack, pen, whatever you want to get. Check out their site. There's a lot of cool stuff. I'll leave a link down in the description box, also in a pinned comment. So if you head on over there, check out all the cool things they have to offer, get a little bit of a discount, get free shipping, check out Ridge Wallet. Getting back into it with the fourth one on the list, which is a 68 Charlie, which is a practical nursing specialist. And you may be thinking, you know, what about a 68 whiskey? And a lot of people mention 68 whiskey for individuals who want to get into the medical field. Well, here's the big differences between a 68 whiskey and a 68 Charlie. So your 68 whiskey, they're a combat medic. They are primarily for situations like a soldier receives a gunshot wound. They get injured from a blast, something in a combat type of zone. These are the individuals that are kind of embedded with those infantry units, other different MOSs, different units to be able to provide that first aid and that trauma treatment on the battlefield when that happens. Now those 68 whiskeys also work like in the aid station, the medical place back on the base, but their primary job is for those kind of trauma things. People come in with some kind of serious injury and they need to treat them to save their life. Your 68 Charlie will learn how to do those things as well, but they're more specifically for your people in the hospital. So if you specifically want to work like in a hospital, this is probably a better MOS for you to have that kind of experience of being more of a nurse because you're going to do more than just simply bandaging people up and trying to save their lives. You're also working with individuals like pregnancies for, you know, pregnant females. You're working with individuals that just have to do normal kind of checkup type of things. So this more directly translates into the civilian world for like someone who wants to work in a hospital as a nurse. You also receive a lot of those certificates, a lot of those nursing types of, you know, things like CPR and everything. I mean, you get a lot of that on 68 whiskey side, but your 68 whiskeys, like I said, they're more of that trauma type of thing. They're working at the aid stations where these are for more individuals that want to work in a hospital and then it'll easily translate over into the civilian world to be able to allow you to work in the hospital. You might still have to, you know, do some schooling because maybe not everything transfers over, but it gives you a lot more of that experience of being in more of a hospital environment compared to more of like a trauma type of environment for like individuals that got like, you know, those serious type of things. These people still work in like the emergency room. So these do, do still have some of that stuff. Some of that basic type of medical type of things you need to learn how to do to stop the bleeding and everything. But like I said, this is a great pri MOS for someone that really wants to get in the medical field in nursing that doesn't need to do a 68 whiskey. You can probably just do that 68 Charlie. Now the last one, the number five on my list, and some people may hate this individuals in this MOS, but you're 42 alpha, you're human resources specialist. The reason why I say some people hate these people in the army. I mean, these are people that work in like S one. These are people that are in charge of making sure they don't lose your leave packet, fixing your pay issues, all that kind of stuff. But the reason why it's on this list is because that is a very real thing in the civilian world that companies need. Pe companies need people to be able to, you know, fix their employees pay problems, to be able to make sure they're up to date on training, to make sure that they have everything processed properly for their employees. So the skills that you learn in the army can very easily translate over to the civilian world to be an HR individual, which do have some pretty good paying jobs depending on your type of level of experience and knowledge in that HR field. 
So it's not wasted on just simply, you know, fixing soldiers pay. I mean, that's a real issue that people have in the civilian world too, with having to, you know, make sure that their pay is being done correctly, their benefits are being processed properly, all of that stuff. And employers need HR individuals to be able to take care of their employees. There's a very good real possibility that these five are not the same five that you thought I was gonna mention, not the same five that you would put on your type of list. I would like to know, what would your list be? Do you agree with a lot of these? Do you, is there certain ones you would like to swap out with a different MOS? I'd love to hear about that down in the comment section down below. Some of you may be curious, why didn't I like mention my old MOS, 88 Mike, Motor Transportation Operator? Well, that's because I don't feel like it's for everybody and it probably doesn't translate quite as well over into the civilian world like these MOSs do. Because on the military side, all the vehicles are all automatics to make it easier so you don't have to worry about anybody, you know, missing a gear or messing up on the clutch and stalling out the vehicle in a very dangerous environment. So all the vehicles are automatics. That's not the case on the civilian side. You're trying to drive a big rig and you have these crazy, you know, crazy shifter knobs, you know, they have these big rigs with these, you know, with a clutch and the double clutch and all these multiple gears and a bunch of gears. And it's, it's crazy, it's complicated, right? So the driving skills may apply, but not the like, you know, certain other technical aspects of driving a big rig compared to driving like a large vehicle in the army. A lot of the people that I know that were ADM mics in the army did not actually go do truck driving when they got out of the army. Some of them did, but I think, I feel like the majority of the ones that I knew did not. Now there's a lot of other great jobs that are out there too, right? But if I was to pick five, these are the ones that I picked. There's a lot of other ones that probably come really close and you're like, man, what about this one? What about that one? That's where I like to hear your guys' input down in the comment section down below though. Of course, there are probably five MOSs that are probably the worst ones to, to have in the army. And if you would like to see me cover that type of video, make sure you like this video. Let's try to get this video to 500 likes. If we can get this video to 500 likes, I'll do the five worst MOSs, the five worst jobs there is in the United States Army, and maybe that's your job. Now, of course, make sure you check out all the links down in the description box for our sponsor, my social media, my website, all that kind of fun stuff. We got some videos over here that you should probably check out to continue your viewing experience here on the Christopher Chaos channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I'm Christopher Chaos, and I'll see you next time. See ya.